So for the selection of the lateral force procedure, it's a little bit uh, confusing uh, to what type of uh, procedure you will be asked to to uh, uh, perform. Okay, so we have actually three types of uh, uh, lateral force procedure. One is the simplified. A static procedure uh, based on section 208.5.1. The second one is the static lateral force procedure 208.5.2. And the last one is the dynamic analysis procedure 208.5.3. Okay. So all you have to take a look into is uh, is to uh, after you, you perform the evaluation for uh, your configuration requirements, uh, it's just to look into this the enumerated uh, criteria on what particular procedure you want to use. Okay. So if your building is light frame and it is not exceeding two stories in height, okay, ito lang ang tignan mo. And you are on occupancy 4 and 5, uh, standard and miscellaneous, then you can use this simplified static procedure. Okay, you can use this one. So this is the limitation. Very easy, no? This is a short uh, procedure on how to compute for your base shear. Uh, then uh, these two here. Uh, but uh, sometimes you don't can, uh, the question is uh, can you use the other procedure if uh, this is the one that is recommended in this yes you can use this too but uh, this is the list that you can uh, use uh, when it comes to uh, earthquake analysis so for the static lateral force procedure which is the most common no? so this is the most uh, common uh, that uh, that we use day to day so this is only uh, good for uh, structures uh, with occupancy category 4 and 5 in seismic zone 2 okay so for zone 4 uh, question for zone 4 can you use this procedure Okay, so you read the next uh, uh, criteria, okay? So for as long as the structure is regular, this is for all structures, regular or irregular. So you are only limited to category 4 and 5 in zone 2. So for regular structures, under 75 millimeters, uh, sorry, 75 meters in height, with LFRS listed in table 208-11 except for section blah blah blah. So this is about the uh, soil prof profile typing. So SF is uh, a very a very uh, a poor soil with uh, which requires a specific site evaluation. Okay. So you can only use this uh, for regular structures. Okay, so you cannot use it for irregular structures. So that's criteria number two. For criteria number three, you can use this for irregular structure, for by that you don't have, you will not exceed 20 meters, dito 75 meters. Binabahan siya dito. So pwede sa irregular, basta uh, five stories in height or less. Okay, and then number four, structures uh, having a flexible upper portion and a rigid lower portion. So these are hybrid structures, okay? So normally, uh, when you talk of this, you are only limited to uh, using this uh, for... Uh, Uh, for structures 
unless you check it you check the average stiffnesses of the lower portion and the upper portion so if i were you if you are using a uh, uh, if you are computing a or or analyzing a structure which has this criteria number four uh, the since the the requirement is too rigid so you just go to dynamic analysis procedure this is a much more uh, precise and accurate procedure than than keeping into these limitations keeping abreast with these limitations okay so because there are a lot of uh, things to consider you just jump on the uh, more precise structural analysis but if what if still you want the static lateral force procedure to use you have to abide by this uh, proportion of at least 10 times the stiffness of the upper portion and so on and the period of the structure uh, is not greater than 1.1 times the period of the upper portion etc so it's just a confusing uh, criteria to, to to deal with so you might as well go to the a dynamic analysis procedure and here's the good thing about the dynamic analysis procedure if you will look at into it uh, the enumerated criteria are very simple you don't have to worry about it because it can actually handle all categories all irregular and irregular irreg structures uh, structures 75 meters or more in height even the, the, the tall buildings okay except as permitted in 208.4.2 of item 1 so uh, this is the first one here uh, except if it is permitted here uh, you can use this one okay so for number two criteria structures having vertical irregularities one two and three what are this one, two, and three? This is the soft story, mass irregularity, and uh, oh, I forgot the third one, the vertical geometric regularity. Okay, so you can use this. Uh, if there are other regularities, can you use this? So the answer is yes. Okay, pwede pa rin. So meaning to say this is uh, very flexible okay for number three structures more than five stories or 20 meters in height even if it is in seismic zone four so you can use it so practically all structures can be handled by using dynamic analysis procedure okay structures regular and regular located even at the poorest uh, soil type sf which is actually uh, banned or not uh, allowed on this criteria for static lateral force procedure. So in short, class, uh, if you don't want to, to involve yourself into a mess of uh, satisfying all the requirements here, you just jump to a dynamic analysis procedure uh, and uh, focus your your interpretation of uh, results in that procedure uh, to to uh, see to it that your your data your your design uh, data will be and information will be enough to guard against uh, possible collapse of the structure uh, against earthquake okay so what is is in this procedure that makes it a very a very powerful procedure so of course uh, dynamic analysis procedure is an advanced procedure uh, you can only learn if you will study a higher uh, degree in structural engineering okay so yun yung tinuturo pag nag masters na kayo sa structural engineering Okay, so that ends my, my presentation today for configuration requirements. Uh, I hope uh, you got something out of it. Uh,